morning and welcome to Morning Matters. This morning we are doing a special Morning Matters. We are in St. Paul's Bank. Way behind us we have... Patrick Stevens. That's right. Patrick is the owner of Casa Stevens. Casa Stevens. In St. Paul's Bank. And with me this morning I have Mr. Kent Thompson. Mr. Thompson, good morning. How are you? I'm fine as fun. <laughs> I love it. And that's the last time you heard that. Mr. Patrick, Mr. Patrick, now Mr. Kent, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh... There is so much to say. Where do I begin from? Anyhow, my life. I spend my entire life in this community. I'm 77 years of age, but I don't feel it. You don't look it? I don't feel it either, and everything walking still. <laughs> so, that's a good part. I live this life in this era for all my life. I enjoy it. I went to school here and everything. I took my profession. I was a mechanic. I did basic hydraulics from Wisconsin. But now I'm retired and I'm home now doing my little farming. All my children have grown and gone fortunately. Okay. They're all married and gone. Tell me a little bit about uh, St. Paul's Bank. This village the population in this village one time was a little more than it is right now. It's estimated 154. It was a little higher one time, but somehow people went away due to the fact that they have to look for different ways of life, living. Agriculture was a way of life one time here. We used to do rice, cattle, pigs and so forth. But Something happened that they moved the rice mill from Belize City and took it to south. And there's where the rice crop went down. Since that time, Big Falls Ranch over this side of the river, they started a massive thing there, growing rice. And they were doing pretty good, but something happened and they went in too. So the people left with just looking for other ways of life. Most people walk go out and work out and come back in weekends. That's how they make their living. Awesome. Yes, and um, what we do, most people do right now, is whenever time they come in, weekend they have the little farm that they, they do the little farming and so on. Like me, what I do, I'm retired now. I don't work for nobody. And um, I just do my little farming. I have a nice piece of land that I work on. I've grown the bananas, cocos, planting, cassavas, you name it. I grow that. And that's how I do my thing. I have, I'm on social security right now. So I've got my little social security money. Awesome! This Come is in. good. What time do um, you normally get up in the morning? Five o'clock. Five o'clock, so I didn't wake up here this morning. Not at all. You were up already. A long time. I love it, I love it. The you early know, bird catches the early worm, my father used to say. Yeah? I still believe in that. How many worms you caught today? Uh, I'm yet to catch some more. Yeah, yet yeah but the early some. worm gets eaten. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. And we have uh, Patrick behind us. Um, yes. Patrick is the guy from Casa Stevens. Casa Stevens is the coolest hot spot in St. Paul's Bank. You can't miss it when you come into St. Paul's Bank. Uh, it's on your left. It's some beautiful little cabanas. The, uh, the ground is well manicured. And uh, as the show goes by, we're going to tell you a little bit more about uh, Casa Stevens. But if you notice, we are on a raft. I mean, not any raft. This is like an amazing little thing. It's like, I don't know how they built it. But when we stop, we're going to ask uh, Stephen to... Stephen now. Patrick, to tell us a little bit more about that. What was the importance of this river to the village? Ah, it was a way of life for everybody because at that time, all the traffic used to be by a river. There was no road up this way. From Belize to Cayo, this used to be the highway. Okay. They used to have a lot of boats running on the river, passenger boats running on the river. At least I could name over a dozen boats running on the river. And they used to take like two, three days from Belize to Cayo with barges, 
towing barges and take up all the gasoline and the machineries and whatnot to Kayo. What did they bring to your village? They, 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 the they, boats. Did they stop in your village? Yes. What did see. they bring? They usually, they take from the village. They, we carry down cargoes like bananas and we, we're products that we used to grow. Bananas and cattle and whatnot in the barges and so on. That's how we used to travel everything down. The boats, when the boats they come up, they stop at the rapids there and people get off and take a bath and whatnot because they find that the boats they had to take wenches to wench over the, over the rapid. Okay. They, had, they take them about three, four hours sometimes to get across. All right. How did St. Balls Bank get its name? It get the name from the Roman Catholic religion. You know, we used to have the Catholic religion come up here and they had a old lady name is Valley. Miss she who? Died, Miss Valley Casasola. She died at the age of 100. Wow. Yes, she died at the age of 100 <laughs> years old. I and mean, she was really the very religious person. And um, that's how St. Paul's got his name. Who were the first settlers in St. Paul's, if you know? The first settlers in St. Paul's was like the Casasolas, the Rivers, the Thompsons. My great-grandfather, James Thompson, they were the first settlers here. You said earlier that back in the day they used to make their living off um, agriculture and farming yes. and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But um, now, how do they make their money? Well, most people work out. They go out and work. The younger people go out and work. They, they go out and work. But we the, we the older one, them. what I do them. It's my little agriculture, like I tell you. I do my little agriculture, and that's how I make my living. So I'm what is the main source of income for this village? Do people, most of them go outside now? Yes, some people go outside and work, but you have other people. You have, the village have quite some skilled people, you know? Mm-hmm. I some skilled people, and those are the people who go out and work and so on. But the other people, they just do the little farming and so on. That's how they live. Awesome. Some people do a little hunting and like that. You know, it's a part time. That's not a way of life anyhow, but it's a hobby like, you know. You put food on the table. Yes. You have something to talk about in the evening when you're going out and hunt and you come back and yes. where you catch and how much of it you catch and did you catch anything, any at all? Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's one way too. But it's like, a, it's like a kind of, it's more like a hobby. People take hunting as a hobby now, you know, so like a sport. As a sport. Uh, Tell me a little bit of, you know, every March today's route of Maya passing through this village. Yes. I would imagine the village becomes alive. Yeah, and we, get, we, get, then. we get a little source of income like that because you have your product that you can sell. You sell your coconut water, you sell your green corn, boiled corn, you make the kuno and sell the kuno. You sell different foods, country food, you know, like game meat and like that. And so people come out of, from the city and they want to eat that kind of food and that's how people make a little money after that. So you look forward to Rutamaya? Everybody, every village look forward to it. Every village look forward every to Rutamaya. Every village look forward to Rutamaya. Tell me something else. What is, I mean, you grew up practically upon the river. I mean, in the village, but practically upon the river because yeah, this the river is a river, villi yes, river yes, village. Yes, yes, um, yes. What are some of the things that we can expect to see on the river? Like early in the morning, oh gosh, Drew, you're missing the beautiful bird behind you, boy. I tell you have, you. You have birds, you have the whole of monkeys, you have jaguar, you have alligator. You'll, you'll probably see some of that this morning, I hope. You think we will? I believe so. You know, I'm sitting here and I am so enjoying the I, view. I, I wish. So, the, I mean, I know we so. only have one cameraman. Space is yeah. limited. Time is limited on this yeah. thing. But That's look that. at those birds go. That is just too beautiful to miss. You yeah. can't afford to miss that. I mean, this is a beautiful morning right here in St. Paul's Bank. You know, I have well. to say, I have to thank the crew, um, the guys from Casa Steven to invite us out. We definitely, this is not going to be our last outing. We're going to be out here again. Uh, hopefully this time we can have the Casa Steven man sitting next to me and telling me a little bit about Casa Steven. But I am happy this morning that we have you, Mr. Kent, to share what some of the river, history. What the river have is a lot of fish. It's a great uh -huh. fishing country. You could catch a fish anytime you want. Tarpon, especially sport fishing, mm -hmm. is good for that. 
very very good for that you have turtles in this river what do you call it hikiti you eat hikiti i i love it it tasty very very tasty is it legal to fish hikiti if you're no, catching them they, they have they have they have a they have a season for it they have a season for it and it's good that they have a season for it because at one time it was getting extinct but they're coming back now okay you could really see that they're coming back because of the restriction that they put down you find that they're coming back excellent yeah i like that anything else you want to tell me about st paul's bank well i invite anybody who want to come to st paul's bank come it's a peaceable place it's a lovely place to be and we welcome everybody who would like to take a trip to st paul and as this class of steven gets a little better we expect to see more people coming into the village Tell me a, a little bit about this stretch of the river that we're on. Oh, this, this place that is right now is called Weird Bank. Is that right over here? There was a school there. <laughs> you can't catch they used it to have a school. A school used to be there. Okay. And all this land here was cleared down, and people used to inhabit it. But because of the change in in um, in the highway, come now and people move from the riverside and they go. To the highway side now, to the roadside. So all these are private properties. You see these land here. Mm -hmm. All these lands are private property, but just that the owners they move and they gone to the highway. More to the road. They gone to the roadside. I would imagine they went to the road. Back in the day, they were on this side because this was like the road. This was. The and road. when the road moved, so to speak, they had to move with the road. Yes, they have to move with it. That's a means of transportation. You see, that's what they used to do but apart from that this village is a quiet place sometimes I wonder if it's not too quiet what is the population 154 the last census we took okay you know but the birth rate is very slow I don't know these boys have to get up and do something well, I, I, I have to get up and you have to get up you're bad <laughs> Mr. Ket say he have to get up and do something what trouble is because this the population is going down well, could it be that there's only a hundred and boy as you turn around, you know, could it be that there's only a hundred and fifty people and most of them are related so it makes it difficult for them to to procreate? I I, I don't think that is a reason. I think something happened that somebody get too slow. Uh, something. The people they, they are relatives, yes, but um, you could still go out and bring in things, man. <laughs> bring in strange strange breed, new blood. We a little new blood uh, in there, too. New blood. New blood. I tell you, Mr. Kent, to challenge the visitors to bring in some new blood. We're going to yeah. take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll be coming back with more from St. Paul's Man. Sending and receiving money has never been easier and more convenient. Announcing the grand opening of the newest MoneyGram location. MoneyGram is now located inside the a &R building at miles one and a half on the Philip Goldson Highway in Belize City. MoneyGram's convenient location and opening hours make it easy for you to conduct all your money transactions. At MoneyGram, you can send and receive money both locally and internationally. We are open from 8 to 12 and 1 to 5 Monday through Friday, and on Saturdays from 8 to 12 and 1 to 2. With convenient parking, great security, and air-conditioned comfort, MoneyGram should be your place of choice to send and receive money. Visit us today at mile one and a half at the ANR building on the Philip Goldson Highway. Si tu perro es de raza, raza grande o pequeña, dale rambocan, rambocan. Si es delgado o robusto, pelo largo, pelo corto, dale rambocan, rambocan, rambocan. En su presentación para adultos, o cachorros. Dale Rambocan Para que tu perro tenga piel sana y pelo brillante Huesos y dientes fuertes Músculos resistentes Y mejor digestión Dale lo mejor Dale Rambocan Salud y vigor para tu perro Seaboard Marine A leader in ocean transportation Is now offering services to Belize Offering the fastest and most reliable transit to Belize Seaboard Marine is the number one choice for shipping we offer shipping of less than container loads, such as boxes, barrels, and chilled cargo. Full dry and refrigerated containers, project cargo, 
heavy and special equipment, vehicles, and more. We have sailings from Canada, Houston, New Orleans, Miami, the Caribbean, Central and South America. Seaboard Marine offers the most competitive rates with a fast and dependable shipping schedule, excellent customer service, and a convenient location with plenty of parking. Visit our office, website, or call us for more information. Not too bad. Boy, I have to tell you, it's good to see you. Thank but you. It's better to be out here. <laughs> right, right, right. Like I'm it. glad that you guys can join us. And I like it. I love <laughs> it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> tell me a little bit about Casa Steven. Well, um, just uh, 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 briefly about myself. Yeah. Um, and then I'll get into Casa Stevens. Sure. Um, I was born and raised in St. Paul's Bank. Um, so as a native villagers um, went to high school but get to realize that school wasn't my thing <laughs> so I, um, I decided to to uh, venture into some different uh, activities and get to find out that scuba diving was uh, a passion for me so my career uh, is scuba diving and then um, since I venture into the tourism world, it, it opened like a wide uh, opportunity uh, of different things for me to do. So I find myself living in Canada, of all places. Boy, you go from St. Paul's Bank to Canada. To Canada. How that happened? Right. Well, being in the tourism business, um, you know, at the time I was single, I didn't have a girlfriend, didn't married. So it opened, uh, it opened a door for me to meet someone so I, I met my partner, and uh, um, 16 years later, you know, I spent 10 years in Canada, and now I'm back in Belize City, and um, now we're, we're doing something completely different. I went to Canada uh, 2001 okay. is when I left Belize, mm -hmm. right after Hurricane Keith. Um, and then I got into uh, the sprinkler world, completely different from scuba diving. Okay. I did uh, six years doing scuba diving and then I left, went to Canada and uh, got into installing underground irrigation system, which is part of, uh, part of the business that we're running now here in Belize. So we're trying to um, convince people to keep their land manicure with, by having um, the sprinkler system because it's very important. Uh, as we know, grass and plant is uh, living just like us, you know, and we all need water to survive. We all need water to survive. So during the dry season, I noticed that a lot of stuff in Belize City uh, just dead, you know, it make it uh, very depressing to see the, the plants and the grass, everything died. Uh, nobody really care because um, we know that rainy season gonna come around and everything will be back green, beautiful. But um, if we really care, you know, we, um, it's very important for it not to die at all. So we have people like you watering it. Right, 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 that's Excellent. correct. Excellent, and now you have Casa Steven in St. Paul's Bank. Right, well again, um, you know, it was just idea putting out there. Um, my passion is to bring employment to the village. That's another thing that, uh, you know, put me at ease to see that I can uh, have um, the local can can benefit from this because you know some of the guys working at Casa Stevens we went to school together and as we all know there's no uh, there's no industry there's there's nothing for employment in, in, in St. Paul's Bank so um, by being back and be able to make this happen we've employed at least uh, nine to ten people throughout for almost the whole uh, last year 
and um, we're making preparation to have the crew back really soon after built uh, two cabanas um, from scratch the way they are now um, you know we were very satisfied with the project uh, now we're gonna have to find a client that's, that's not going to be a problem, absolutely not going to be a, a problem, simply because I am sure that once people know that this place exists, it will make it. I mean, you can come on a river tour like this early in the morning, late in the evening, whenever you want, and just get away from the hustle and bustle and noise of any other place. Well, we also want to let the, uh, the, the, the local Belizean know as well that we are open for business for Belizean as well as uh, the tourism industry. You know, we're going to have tourists, but we also have... Uh, we want a local to come out, especially the hard-working people in Belize yes. City that need a nice getaway. Uh, this is, this is, you know, it's paradise, really. I could live here. I could live here <laughs> any minute. I absolutely can. Well, you know that we're on the river and we will take this opportunity to do some morning matters because, you know, we're out here. We have to do a little morning matters. We, you know how morning matters work. Morning right. Matters is a place where people send their matters. Anything that matters to you matters to us. You text in your matters to us at the number on the screen. You can email your matters into us. They can WhatsApp their matters into us. And mm -hmm. then we discuss it. So you have any matters? Well, um... <laughs> Let's have a little fun around uh, uh, the river. Yeah, yeah. Well, well for now, I, I, I cannot complain. You know, life is good. Um, I just want to say that, you know, if you work hard, your dreams can come true. You know, everybody um, dream is to is to have a comfortable life, and and we all know that that come with a price. Boy, you everything know? come with a price. Yeah, definitely. Especially uh, these days where things are not getting easier, it's it's getting um, harder because uh, you know all the stuff that are happening in the world. Um, you know, there's wars. There's so I think Belize right now um, is one of the country that we 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 are going to be expanding and we are going to be extended. We we are uh, in in Central America, we're one of the only English speaking country. That's right. Which give us an advantage. So um, if we would all can work together, um, we we can make this place into. Uh, a destination not only for the tourists but f we, we're gonna have our our uh, cousin and uncle and aunt that left you know to go live in America they won't you know they, they want to come back eventually and um, and when they get to find out that all this time paradise is right in their backyard Boy, that true that, that absolutely true that you know we go so far to seek so much just to come back to where we start right could you imagine but you couldn't appreciate it the way you appreciate it now if you never left it. That's correct. Because it would seem so normal. You would have not seen much, so you would think, oh, there's much more to see. And there is much more to see, but this is special. This is special. And how, how you know it, you have to left, like you said, and you then come back. You have to go and come back. Um, when I was up in Canada, I could recall many nights I... Uh, you cry? I, I cry many nights, you know. Um, <laughs> I, I used to work on this oil rig up in um, northern Alberta. Uh -huh. And um, I, I didn't really experience coal. We don't know what coal is here in Belize, you know, to start with. So when I went up there and I realized that everybody are hardworking people. So all these tourists that come here and spend their money, trust me, they work really hard to earn it you know there's no money tree over there that and you know it's frozen. right 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 and the reason why they're successful is because they work hard you, you know have they to work hard you have to work hard we're very laid back here you know we come from a laid back country and you know we're not we're not going to change our lifestyle it's our, it's our way of living here it's our way of living but we have to i think i mean we have to put a little bit more speed to it sometimes right Just a right little right bit more, a little bit more effort mm -hmm. a second. well let's jump into some matters how deep is the river right how here? deep is the river right here the river is about i would say about 15 to 20 feet deep right here right now but um like as we know the river fluctuate quite a bit so by tomorrow that number could change just because, by, a, by a few more feet right right because the water is falling right now this is what we consider the dry season so what happened in the dry season the river go down to the lowest or what we'll call bottom out you know it go down to the lowest uh um throughout the dry season and what happened 
this river is so important not only to uh, to, to us as villagers because we catch uh, fish we catch fish and and, and we depend on the, on hunting and fishing or that's what our ancestors do mm -hmm. but we got to remember that this river is so important that when the uh, when the watering hole dried out in the jungle the uh -huh. wildlife have no choice but come to the river for a drink okay so that that play a big role in the um, with the wildlife as well so as a rip as it get drier and we do this uh, bamboo rafting we're gonna notice uh, one time I, I noticed that the the tapir in the middle of the day was baiting you know in the water that was pretty cool to see um, we, we see these big birds we call caraso or you know yes. on the side of the river they black with yellow head um, we've seen crocodiles sunbathing on the side of the riverbank so as you get drier um, it become more interesting. I, I, I have to say that this is a definitely a treat for me and I definitely look forward to coming back. Let's jump into a matter. Is that okay with you, Drew? Sure. You know, Drew's the boss here. He decides when we <laughs> jump into matters. This one says, I am with a young man. We have a child. But I am with a young man. Have a child with him. He cheated on me, but he live here for me. But I still, no, we can't read that one. Because that one not coming out of language you could understand. This one says, I have a boyfriend, but he says he loves me and he wants a baby with me. But he does not speak about us being together or getting married. What am I to do? <laughs> I think young people these days are very naive. And, you know, we, we have to um, know exactly who we are before we make a committed decision. Um... You know, life is life is a beautiful gift from Isn't God it? to start with. You know, um, so I, I would advise any young people to just, you know, take your time, think about your career, think about what you want to do in this life before you you get committed to uh, having babies and all that responsibility. If if you're not sure about your partner, there's no reason for you to get into that to start with. And at least she is looking on. The practical side. She 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 noted that he didn't have any long term plan other than the baby. All he wanted was to have the baby. He never says we're going to get married, we're going to build a house, we're going to do none of that. No, just to get the baby. Relax yourself. Listen to this gentleman. This one says, "Morning. Me and my boyfriend live in his mother's yard and our space, in our own space, but his mother and brothers not like me because of his ex girl. I got pregnant, and I had a stillborn daughter." But because I never show them the document, they are, they don't believe me. I had big, big belly, but they just want to mind my business. Hmm. I guess she was pregnant, but because she never gave birth to a live child, they believe that it was a lie. She wants to know what to do. She had big belly, like we are saying in a Creole. Right. And nobody believe her still. Well... It's difficult, right? Um, when your fam when families don't like you, they look for a problem and excuse. But your concern shouldn't be so much what they believe. It's what you know is true and what your partner believes. If living in your mother-in-law's yard is bringing you grief, then move out of her yard. That's it. Because you and your husband or your man need to formulate your own space and your own life to make your own happiness. Definitely. Definitely. Um... You know, the, the, the average Belizean, we spend a lot of time focused on the negative rather than the positive, you know, and that doesn't get us anywhere. It's true. You know, we, we, have, to, um, we have to start to see the good in each other um, rather than the bad. Um, I'm a captain, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, from my experience, you know, I, um, I went into a family you know, um, in Canada that I, I have no idea what I was getting myself into. But the most appropriate thing to do is to always have respect for your, your in-laws. You know, um, you, you, you show respect and you will get respect. I like that. Um, so you just got to humble yourself in this life. Whatever, you know, I, I take that as a personal challenge when somebody doesn't like me, you know, um, 
which you know I find very rare. A lot of people really <laughs> like me because of my personality. <laughs> it's but, easy to like you, yes. But, but when they don't like you, it's probably because they don't know you. Right, exactly. So so people need time to get to know you, and you need to shine at your very best. You you cannot. Uh, uh, you know, you, you, you can't have a, a, a bad attitude. You, you cannot show people that side of you. You have to, even if you don't like somebody, show them that you like them. And they will, you know, it's very contagious. It'll, it'll come like back it. to you. I absolutely like it. The man said, be your best and they have no choice but to love you. Right. My Rhonda, my man says he loves me and I'm the only one. But he's telling me his sister is always trying to give him to other girls. Do you think I should be concerned? <laughs> um, you know, again, it's an individual thing. It's, it's, they can do whatever they want. People can say whatever they want. At the end of the day, it's what you want. You know, you know yourself. Um, so in that case... Again, I, I love challenging because it, now you're challenging me, you know, and um, in that case, if, if I have a, you know, if I have a, a girlfriend and, and her brother is trying to give her away to somebody else, well, you know, the best of me going to come out to challenge them. <laughs> and You straighten your magnet so you right, can draw them in closer. Right, definitely, definitely. So, so you know, if, if you see something and you, you want it, you got to go get it. And it's not going to come to you just like that. So you got to put some effort into it. Put a little energy and effort into right. it, the man says. You know, I like for his strategy, you know. <laughs> this man might be a plain man, but you know, simple. He, got, he definitely got game. He got sense. Morning. What wrong with the, what wrong with the fleecing of young ladies by the minister in government? I had a time when my little sister won went i guess went to a minister for a job or a scholarship and he wanted her to take him he wanted to take her for dinner first and then have sex well that the here see you know matter if the minister that the dog the neighbor you have to know your work and if right. you go to somebody and they are not giving you what you want, then you say no and walk away? Well, this is a problem with, with, with a lot of us, you know, um, as, you know, I'm, I'm midway through my life right now, and, and we should be a road model to young people. We shouldn't try to um, physically abuse or mentally abuse uh, the younger generation, you know. Um, I'm pretty sure the minister is, is probably you know, more than likely older, a lot older than her. Mm -hmm. So this is where um, respect come in. You know, you, you have to have respect for the young people. If, if you want to take her for dinner and, and have a, a nice conversation about, you know, but not trying to hit on her, but trying to teach her what you know and your experience through life. And, maybe, and you know, maybe you can teach her something that she will take along with her and, and when she see the world or she sees somebody you know she can look at them differently because now she 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 thought some experienced stuff and i'm talking about positive stuff you know um not advantage nobody no no don't take advantage of nobody because it will come back to you you know what goes around comes around it's so true. um I, I, like i said before i'm not very educated but i've, I, I've, I've been blessed you know patrick we all we shouldn't say that why because and all of us come here with our own individuality and we can't continue to compare it against somebody else's because right. what the pilot know the doctor don't know that's correct he's just a pilot and he's mm -hmm. just a doctor but what the what the second know the pilot and the doctor put together no no right so right right when i mean we have our own level of education and we have our own speciality mm -hmm. we all specialize differently the ones with the bachelor's and master's degree might not know the depth of this river Right. Because they never live here. <laughs> so that can't, you can't say because they're a doctor or they're a lawyer, they're more, they know something more or different. But they don't know what you know. So we all have to, and a lot of people like say, well, you know, and I have no education. You have more education <laughs> in your field. We have our own strength and we must celebrate it. Having said that, you'll do good this morning. I love it. <laughs> you build this boat yourself? This raft, yes, was constructed, you know, um... We started out, I, I started out just to try to figure out what can, what can we do on the river, what would be exciting, what would, you know, and, and then I, I thought about these bamboo, um, 
and to build a raft. So what happened is we started a first uh, little pilot project and, and built a, a 20 foot bamboo raft that can hold two people and a driver. Mm. And when I mean that, I mean, you know, exactly what Mr. Kent is doing right now. Um, and it float and it work. So we decided to make it bigger. So these bamboo raft, these are 30 feet long and they're six feet wide and they can hold six people and a driver, which is seven people. So um, after building the first one, then you, you started to get ideas about how to build the second one. Now I want it to be all natural. I want it to be eco-friendly. I didn't want any engine behind it. I didn't want to... It's so you, quiet and nice. Right, guy. right, right. The bamboo now doesn't have a very long lifespan because the, you know, in, in the heat of the sun, it'll crack them and, and, um, and you know, kind of ruin them. Uh, so the lifespan on this bamboo raft is probably going to be about another year and then we'll have to change the bamboo. I'm still trying to figure ways how to cure them. Uh, you know, I look in line and I, I, I've seen different ways how to do them. Some of them are Just very... Just a second. Yeah. He figured it out. He know everything. He not fire. He right. not fire for about almost 80 years. He not fire. Right, right. What, I'm pretty how sure. How about that, Drew? A man with a gun and a machete. He <laughs> out. What he need to do out there? This big bird right here. And a dog. Drew, the man behind him, he got a gun, one machete, and one dog. It looks like he's a hunt. Right, that's a hunter, man. Oh, he got something in like hand too? <laughs> Where you got? What lot of dog he got? Why the man going to give nut? Oh, he get? He going to give nut. Okay, where that? What that in English? Um, give nut is a little ah. animal that we call, uh, that, that is known ah. as, as paka. Uh-huh. And, and, and paka ah. is a delicacy. Huh? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you have to love it. Morning. Morning, morning. Yeah, yeah, Pastor. Why are you catch? Hey, I'll give not. How long it take you to catch this give not? Quick thing, like, uh oh. A year half an hour. And what you gonna do with it? We are here, pot. It's a way of life here in the village. The man said it take him 20 minutes to catch the give not. And then you go into the pot. You think all the dogs then get in the boat too? <laughs> really? I would love to see all the dogs get in that boat. Well, while we do that, while we watch that, make we get another matter. Morning. My ex and I have one child, and he is married. I am married. We've been in high school. We've been from high school, sweetheart. But he wants us to have a secret affair. But I love my husband. What to do? Wow. Wait. Morning, my ex. We have a child. He's married. Okay, both of you are married. He's your ex. You were high school sweethearts. I guess you went off, got married to other people. And now he wants you to have a secret affair. The answer is no. <laughs> the answer is no. The answer has to be no. Why the answer has to be no? It's because he had the opportunity to marry you and you had the opportunity to marry him. Right, definitely, definitely. And you have made other contracts with other people. Yeah, you are committed. So, you know, um, if you want to ruin everything that you got, you can go ahead and do that, but the uh, what matter is you are committed, and if you stay loyal to your husband, your husband will stay loyal to you. You know, you you have to. It's a two-way street. It's not a one-way street. That's right, and you have to respect the street you're walking on. My ex-boyfriend from high school days wants another chance. We've known each other for nine years now. We parted on good terms. Do you think he deserves it? <laughs> Not so violent. It's okay. It's some okay. I mean, you know, there, there's circumstances. Um, it depends on what kind of situation you, you, you're in right now. You don't see. You don't want to put yourself in a situation that you don't want to be in. I, I like always, that. I always um, talk about that, simply because of the fact that you, you know you have to know the benefit of this. Is it going to benefit you? Is it going to? Um, is it is there's no benefit to that then you know um we do in the village here we play danimos a lot so i got a partner from houston texas so i asked him i said would you like to go downstairs and play danimo with the guys he uh he looked at me and he said patrick if it's not making me money i'm not interested so there got to be some benefit to this is what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. um you know if if there's a good chance that you can get together and, and you know eventually get married and and make a life and and have kids and all that good stuff you know and, and have a fun life together then then that's fine but if you're just going to go waste your time 
I notice a lot of young people now just do things for pleasure. Um, pleasure is great. Everybody loves having, you know, pleasure. But at the end of the day, you know, after the, the pleasure only lasts for a little while. And then after that, it's, boy. it's to reality. And the reality is, you know, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? What do I have planned for my future? And who, who am I going to plan my future with? You so, know, you know, Patrick, you know, the more you talk, the wiser your song. Because <laughs> the basic common sense, I mean, that makes sense. If you don't have one plan, and like you said, pleasure only lasts for now. Right. This pleasure now will last for the next six years. This pleasure for the next 15 minutes. Definitely. But depending on what your real plan is, you probably could see other things in there that will bring you other pleasure. Right, right. You, you got you to gotta, you gotta see ahead. You got to look ahead. You can't look at the moment, you know. It's, it's just a... Sometimes it's just a moment thing. Um, I'm a guy and, you know, I, I, it's nice to look and see and, and see all these beautiful young ladies and, and all of that. But, you know, I got to ask myself, okay, am I going to, by, by messing around with them, am I going to help them or am I going to hurt them? So, you, you know, you just, you got to think before you, you act. Um, so when you, when you do things, you, you got to think about it and then you you make your next move but you can't just just go do it without have a plan in life you have to have a plan you have to have a plan on that note we're going to take a break and come back with our third and final segment sending and receiving money has never been easier and more convenient announcing the grand opening of the newest moneygram location moneygram is now located inside the anr building at miles one and a half on the philip goldson highway in belize city MoneyGram's convenient location and opening hours make it easy for you to conduct all your money transactions. At MoneyGram, you can send and receive money both locally and internationally. We are open from 8 to 12 and 1 to 5 Monday through Friday, and on Saturdays from 8 to 12 and 1 to 2. With convenient parking, great security, and air-conditioned comfort, MoneyGram should be your place of choice to send and receive money. Visit us today at mile one and a half at the ANR building on the Philip Goldson Highway. Si tu perro es de raza, raza grande o pequeña, dale rambocan, rambocan. Si es delgado o robusto, pelo largo, pelo corto, dale rambocan, rambocan, rambocan en su presentación para adultos. Cachorros. Dale Rambocan Para que tu perro tenga piel sana y pelo brillante Huesos y dientes fuertes Músculos resistentes Y mejor digestión Dale lo mejor Dale Rambocan Salud y vigor para tu perro Seaboard Marine A leader in ocean transportation Is now offering services to Belize Offering the fastest and most reliable transit to Belize Seaboard Marine is the number one choice for shipping we offer shipping of less than container loads, such as boxes, barrels, and chilled cargo. Full dry and refrigerated containers, project cargo, heavy and special equipment, vehicles, and more. We have sailings from Canada, Houston, New Orleans, Miami, the Caribbean, Central and South America. Seaboard Marine offers the most competitive rates with a fast and dependable shipping schedule. Excellent customer service, and a convenient location with plenty of parking. Visit our office, website, or call us for more information. You know, I never thought there was so much to do in these little villages and banks and Doublehead and Willow and St. Paul's, but 
it's great. We had a great tour on the river. We got some good home cooking here. We got a tortilla on the grill and some sausage and a little Thanks. baby on the way. And <laughs> You know, Drew, maybe because we're doubling today, maybe you can grab the camera and, and, and adjust it higher. So Where is can the see cameraman more. today? The cameraman is probably out canoeing or doing something. <laughs> so, um, what do you want to look at? I want to look at what's going on here. That's I what? want a good visual. You want to do this I want, she says if I want to do the turkey, yeah, she has no oh, idea what she Don't let for. Rhonda touch the food. Why? I need to wash my hands and do the turkey, yes. So, let's wash my hands. And obviously, I'm making my own tortilla here. Yeah. So, we'll do some morning matters in the kitchen. Um, do, do you have any matters this morning? What do I do? Oh, you roll it. Roll how it you out. roll it? Mash it. Show me how. All right, just mash it around. Just mash mash it. it like this? Mm -hmm. I love it. The whole wheat tortilla with the make? Yes, whole wheat tortilla. Well, you know how morning matters work, right? Morning matters is a program where people send in their matter. Anything that matters to them matters to us. Tell us your name. Simone. Simone, and your name? Kim. Kim. All right. So, any matters on the phone this morning? Waiting for the baby. <laughs> Waiting for the baby. When the baby and come, girl? Supposed to do anytime now. Real. Is it anytime? Like this minute, we could all witness it. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. <laughs> How is this for my first tortilla making? Good, good. Get bigger, it could get bigger. It could get bigger? No, I don't want to do it too big. Because, because the frying pan was so big. Right. Oh, I got it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's how you're supposed to do it? Alright, that's okay. Alright, now we want to move it over here. Put the, um, onion in now. We want to put it there. Hey, see, she knows how to do it. That's to kill the germs. <laughs> <laughs> Who says that's to kill the germs? I really think that's to make it nicer. Anyway, let's jump into our matter. Let me grab my phone and get our matter going while we're still in the kitchen. Where to cook this, okay? Um. Sausage? Like a sausage. Turkey sausage. Turkey? A turkey sausage? Sausage or give nut sausage. Give nut sausage. Well, Kim, um, what do you do for a living? What do you do when you know the out here? Okay, I'm a tour guide. I work at the community baboon sanctuary. I'm a, I'm a having a probably a day off, not feeling too good today. But so, you're good enough for cook? Yeah, I'm good enough to make some food. I don't know if I could eat it because my appetite is not good. Right well, now. you don't have to worry about eating it. Eating is not the problem. We can eat it for you. <laughs> right? As long as it cook, we can eat it. That is my job. I come here to eat. Right. <laughs> this morning I had an awesome tour uh, on the river okay. with. Uh, oh, the turkey for flip the Oh, I smell it burning. Oh gosh, wait! Let me flip the turkey up. There. Right, yeah, flip. Turn the fire on just a little Turn bit. Turn the fire. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing now? All right. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Marlin, I am with this guy. I love him, but his kids and their mother keeps disrespecting me. And my kids treat him with love. What am I to do? Come, Kim, you must know something about this. What, 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 what is that? She there with her man who, um, who, her ex, her ex, her kids, his kids not treat she good. And I guess I could make another one. And, yes. <laughs> and he wants to know what she wants to know what because her children treat me with respect, but his children not treat she with respect. You want to know what for them? <coughs> Anybody jump in? Particularly now, my girl, good job. Um, what do you think you should have do? Go. <laughs> well, in, in a situation like that, yeah, I'll bad bang back to again. Um, having respect and humble yourself, you know, eventually, it, it, you know, they, they will have respect for you, so treat them nice. Continue to do what you do, you know, if, if that's what you're doing, then continue to treat them nice, and, and eventually it will happen. Like, there's no doubt about that. So no, no, no get ignorant with them? No, no, of course not. Kids are no. kids. Kids are kids. You can't right, They say right. kids are kids. Make so if she, if she start, um, or if she continue to treat them nice, uh, th that's the memory that the kids will grow up with. That's what they will always remember. You know, that was a very nice lady. Regardless of how we Regardless treat her. Regardless of how we treat her. So, you know, actually what you're doing, you're teaching them something by respecting them and teaching them nice. You know, you're, you're, they're going to be the beneficiary on the long run, not you. Uh-huh. How oh, you like that? Marlon Ronda, I have a friend. She married and cheating on her husband that's 22 years and she is 35 years. And I think, and I talked to her, what advice would you tell her so that she can stop it? Her husband, 22, she 35, and she cheated. 
a new telling. Oh, sorry. So you want to know what to do? What to do that? Drew, help me out. What do you think, Rhonda? I think I could get a job as a 30 year maker. <laughs> <laughs> but, besides, but besides that, I think um, at 35, she should have, at any age, she should have known enough to cheat. Maybe instead of telling her what to do, you need to ask her some questions. Like, what is the purpose of her cheating? If you want to know a married relationship, or what, why why you even married if you feel the need to be with somebody else? You know, that would have been, I would have asked her more questions than I would have tell her what to do. I'd have asked her questions and then listen to her advice. Some of the questions I would ask her is, oh gosh, I can't keep this job, yeah, boy. Some of the questions I would have asked her, that why is she doing what she's doing? What she hope to get out of what she to do? And then the kind of things I would ask her, and hopefully in her answering you, she would have come up with her own answers. Right. Reason I'm mm-hmm. enough? Very good. Tell me your name again. Simone. Simone, how are you, Simone? <laughs> how old are you, Simone? 22. 22. Where did you do before you start flip 13 in this kitchen? <laughs> Tell me. School. Yeah, um, been going to school. Okay. Mm-hmm. Come and you sh- All right. So, what life like in the village? You know, from this village? Mm-hmm. All your life? All my life. From, from five years old, first year living in Kyle. Uh huh. So basically, all my life we've been here. Um. Well, we we when we were growing up, you know, our family has always been close. Mm-hmm. So um, a lot of times our family come together. We would go down to my grandma where you guys were. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's where we'd spend most of our time. You know, Mother's Day, summertime. Um, Easter when the river is low, Maya. Maya, that's a big part of our family and um, we've been watching it from we were very small. The first time it actually passed, uh-huh. we saw it and um, we grew up watching it and now we have my brother and my cousin participate. Is this their first year? No, fourth. this is their fourth. Wh- how did they do before? Um, they did they, they done pretty well. You know, they um they work so whenever they get time off they go and practice, you know. And then they're supporting themselves. You know, they don't really have a sponsor for that. So they've been doing well so we want last year they didn't participate, but this year they're participating and their the the team's name is Fast Powered Boys. Okay. Well, I will definitely look for them this year. We'll Fast see how that works. Fast, Fast forward, forward boys. boys. Drew, you should see my tortilla making skills. The world should see my tortilla rolling skills. I don't know about making skills. <laughs> it has improved. There was a time that this would be nothing but a square. It's closer to a circle now. <laughs> I am so pleased with my genius. Yeah, you really teach me something, yeah? Huh. My finger is tired out now. Anyway. A time for somebody else read that matter. Kim, why not read the matter then for me? Because it comes in a perfect creole. Read that one there for me. It says, I am a 35 year old man. My common law wife is 31. Oh, I do whatever really? I can and everything to show my really? love, and she acts as if it's nothing for her, not even a thanks. What do you think of this? What do you think of this? I think they're speaking different love languages. Yeah. Oh, you, know, you think, Drew? Yeah. Well, then if you get on the same page, how do they get on the same page? I bet he thinks she doesn't love him. Yeah. Well, maybe, and that is, on, but then, if if you, if I do, like, 30, yeah, let's say you make 30 for your husband, and every day you make 30 because you love her, you turn down the stove. Right there. Right? And... If he don't like turkey, you don't waste your time. Mm. You, he might like sere. So you need to learn from make sere or bring somebody yes. in the house to make sere. But if he tell you, babe, I don't like turkey, then you need to stop make turkey after all. Mm. Yeah, okay. yeah. Communicate with him. Communicate with her. Find out what it is that she wants. And then that would, it might be something easy to give other than you go out and work all day and give all your money all that. She probably uh-huh. just want to talking, yeah. want to hugging, want to affection. Maybe she wants to go out now and again with him. Okay, let me mm-hmm. do this. You know? Yes. So I say learn her love language. That would help you better able to deliver. Right, Drew? Right. 
You have that issue, Drew? Do you have a book on that, Rhonda? <laughs> on what? You know who has the different a different love languages? Chris so Emmanuel wrote book. a book on that. Um, or he has a book that speaks a little bit about that. But you can go online and you can look for that book and find it. Why I just please with my turkey as in this morning. We'll see how it tastes. <laughs> well, the taste is not mine. I just made it this circle, this <laughs> thing. No, you put your essence on it. <laughs> that is mine to eat. Well, I'll tell you what. I think that you should go over there and read some matters and answer no, some matters. No, 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 you're doing a good job. Aye, aye, aye. Now, we're making up a trick. Nobody wants uh, some eggs. We're doing some eggs. Can I ask a question? I am watching the show. Is that man, oh, a doctor or a psychologist? I really need help. Which man could they have been asking about? That guy there. <laughs> <laughs> they probably are asking about an old one. Um, probably Mr. Kent. It was Mr. Kent. Hmm. I'm not sure which guy you were asking about, but if you can tell me the day and the time that you saw it, I can answer you. I am single. I've been so for two years. Why is love so hard to find? Help me out. Wow, wow, wow. Maybe she has to lower her standards. Wait, wait, she says something. Come here. What you say? Come right here. What you say? <laughs> Maybe she has to lower her standards. Well, oh, oh, how beneficial can that be, Simone? Um, sometimes, you know, we're looking for that Mr. Right. And we're looking for him to have certain qualities, but, you know, it doesn't take a lot from a person to meet you happy, right? You know, as long as you both connect, it doesn't have to be, um, some smart, smart person or something like that, you know? Yeah, So adjust your standards a little bit. The ladies say adjust your standards a little bit. But while I put this on here, Drew, come in the shot so we could wrap up Morning Matters, man. Thank you for reading Matters then, girl. You're so kind. Thank you for feeding me. I would love this house, Drew. You enjoyed it? You enjoyed it? I did. I'm, I can't wait to try your tortillas. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, until next time, until next time, we encourage you to take care of yourselves and each other. This is Rhonda Coyne along with Drew and Stephen Family. That's right. In Casa Stevens. Bye-bye. <laughs>